Hi, I'm Amanda Morrell, Personal Finance Editor with Interest.co.nz, and I'm here today with Kirk Hope for another one of our Double Shot interviews. Welcome, Kirk. Thank you. Kirk is the Executive Director of the Financial Services Federation, which is the professional body representing finance companies. Um, Kirk, for the benefit of people who are unfamiliar with your business, can you explain to us what your federation actually does? Sure. So uh, we've been in existence since 1965, representing finance companies and building societies. Um, so being their voice, uh, I guess, in Wellington, if you like. Yep. And how many members do you uh, represent? Uh, we currently have 38. Okay. Uh, and yep. that includes uh, the likes of uh, all of the building societies, SBS Bank, okay. Heartland, uh, and, and Merrick, obviously, and... Uh, a number of um, vehicle financing firms like Toyota Financial Services, European Financial Services, BMW Financial Services, and Mercedes-Benz Okay, Financial so we're talking about some pretty high-end lenders in the finance That's uh, right. company sector. Okay. Um, a lot of your members actually weathered through the whole um, collapse of the financial uh, companies um, incident pretty well. Why is that? Um, well, I think primarily they'd been uh, in business for a long period of time. A number of the firms that, um, that, that cropped up during the 2000s were relatively new to uh, the scene, if you like. Um, so I did some analysis uh, for a presentation recently. We look at the, the period, probably 2000 to 2005, and the number of finance companies doubled during that period. This is just uh, from a KPMG FIPS survey point of view. Still, that's a good proxy for you know what was going on in the sector. Um, that's pegged back now to the sort of number of firms that are operating uh, around 2000, so about 25. Those 25 firms had been relatively consistent in the in the period up to 2000. So, you know, they run pretty good business models. They have good risk management systems in place. Their governance is pretty comprehensive. Mm -hmm. Um, they'd probably been doing all of the things that the Reserve Bank is now regulating for by mm -hmm. way of capital and, um, and liquidity. Okay. Um, at the financial uh, summit recently, which was targeting loan sharks, there was a lot of discussion there about how to kind of crack down and clean up the industry. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that a lot of that uh, criticism was sort of aimed at um, sort of operators um, outside of your federation's uh, reach? Yeah, you know, the way that we looked at it is um, well, certainly the... Uh, it was. It looked to be targeted much more at you know very high interest rate lenders. Um, mm. A lot of the lenders who were uh, you know charging 1.3 percent per day or 1.1 percent per day interest. Um, the types of things that we were you know interested in is how to regulate payday lending. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think there's some interesting things to come out of that summit. Okay. Um, one of the suggestions that uh, was discussed was imposing a cap on interest rate fees mm -hmm. uh, and interest rates or the end fees and also some greater transparency around disclosure, some of the terms and conditions. There's the suggestion mm -hmm. that people just don't know what they're getting into. Um, what do you think about some of those ideas? Is that going to have any effect on, um, you know, preventing people from getting into taking on more dumb debt? Yeah. Uh, one of the things that we um, have been talking about and we're looking to um, get out there is a, a sort of a, um, a summary of the key terms and conditions in loan contracts because um, I think that is um, that's important. You get a get a, a loan terms and conditions document which uh, is you know thirty or forty pages long. Your average consumer in the street um, there's a lot of stuff in there <laughs> for people to digest. So um, we've been looking at a, a one pager which has effectively got the five or six key terms and conditions and that would include the likes of how much interest you might pay over the period of the, the, the loan, the mm -hmm. fees and, um, and what happens if it goes wrong, what happens if you get yourself into a, or your circumstances change um, and what you can do about that. Okay, I understand uh, one of the suggestions your federation has also um, come up with is the idea of sort of capping the, uh, the period of which you could borrow, is that correct? Um, so for one of the things that we did before the financial summit is we mm -hmm. sent um, a position paper into the Ministry of Consumer Affairs and we said, look, actually, um, if you look at consumer credit in New Zealand, um, high interest rate lending is a very, very small proportion. There are a high number of providers, but it's a very, very small proportion of the overall you know, consumer credit market. What we suggested is that you target um, the area of harm, and that is where people get locked into, you know, 100% interest for for per annum periods. So their actual interest cost is 100%. Mm -hmm. 
and we said, you know, what you might want to do is cap the um, period for those loans um, or ma have a maximum term and, and a maximum number of rollovers so that people don't get trapped into long-term high interest rate debt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I understand um, Consumer Affairs Minister Simon Power is looking at imposing or coming up with some um, suggestions pretty smartly here. November, I think, was what he had suggested. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think he, he, um, he was pretty clear that he wants something on the table before before he leaves Parliament. So, okay. yeah. Um, one of the participants, I think it was the um, F uh, F FMA uh, regulator, Sean mm -hmm. Hughes, had suggested that throwing more regulation at this problem is, in itself is not going to fix the situation. Would you concur with that? Yes and no. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think... Um, I think from uh, from the Federation's perspective there there was some material which came out before the summit which was pretty alarming that is you know we've got new rules that require financial service providers to register um, the Ministry of Consumer Affairs had some material which says you know 40 percent of financial service providers aren't registered mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's a pretty easy regulatory win mm -hmm. uh, so when Sean says um, not more regulation, I think that's probably right. It's just regulate, just effective enforcement of current regulation. Okay. Um, one of the other areas is I, th I think that is well outside regulation. The ambit of regulation is is dealing with the demand for you know high interest rate credit, yeah. and and I think that's a bigger um, you know social. Uh, problem for the government and, and New Zealand society to look at. Yeah, just before we came on camera, you were telling me about some trusts that are uh, have some interesting initiatives in that regard. Can you yep. just elaborate on those briefly? Well, I think the the government's uh, initiative, Fana Ora, uh, facilitates you know a, a group of um, or it, it provides funding to uh, an individual uh, social service provider to deal holistically with a set of clients. Uh, Te Whanau o Waipareira already do that type of thing, mm -hmm. where they receive government funding, but they have a holistic view of the client that they're dealing with. So they're dealing mm -hmm. with you know, some pretty deep socioeconomic issues, right. um, but they're able to do it in a fairly smart way. Mm -hmm. Would you say that most of the clients that come to your membership know or are savvy enough to know what they're getting into when they take out some of these loans, or do, could they stand to use some education as well? Well, I think... <laughs> One of the things with loan contracts is that they can, because of the regulatory requirements of what they need to include, they can be um, they can be pretty complex. Mm. Um, so I think all of us can do with some form of education in that area. But I, th I think the most important thing is if we can shortcut the unimportant stuff and get to what's really important. What what is what is effectively what are the hooks, real hooks in this contract for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. uh, or for you, or for you know the the person in the street? Then then we we're, we're onto a bit of a winner, and that's why we think that one page with the key terms and conditions can help. Um, but certainly, financial literacy increase and a focus on financial literacy will assist. Okay, excellent. All right, Kirk Hope, thank you very much for joining us on Interest.go. I'm Amanda Morell, personal finance editor, and we'll see you next time.